arrived at our hotel in Hangzhou. We are actually staying at the Ibis, just here. But it's on a quite a busy street. We got like dropped off further down. We just checked in and we just kind of walked forward. We'd wander around. This is like a, a pedestrian street. So we're going to see if we can get some food and a drink. And yeah, Hangzhou. Hangzhou is known for a wonderful lake, which we will be going to later in this video, but it is also home to some delicious local food. So we will be trying all of the food on this trip and we begin tonight. Firstly, we try these Longjing prawns, also known as tea prawns. So Hangzhou grows a famous kind of green tea that is only grown in the Westlake area. So these prawns are stir fried and cooked with the Longjing tea to give you a smooth, slightly bitter taste. Next we try Dong Po Roy. It's a braised pork belly and a must try in Hangzhou. It was amazing and we highly recommend it. And we had it several more times on this trip because it was that good. So with this meal, we also tried the Westlake fish. This is another local speciality with a fish taken from Westlake in Hangzhou and cooked in vinegar gravy. We loved all the food here and the service was excellent. There are some fantastic restaurants along the Ziying pedestrian street, so head to that area whilst in Hangzhou. I'll put the names of these pedestrian streets in the description below if you are heading to Hangzhou. The Hangzhou Westlake is a beautiful picturesque place to visit in the city. This is what the city is known for dating back over 2000 years. So you could easily spend a few hours walking around the different trails here, take a boat ride around the lake and look out for the landmarks like the Six Harmonious Pagoda and the Ling Yin Temple. There are also shuttle trams that can be used for those less able to walk around the lake, but we highly recommend spending a few hours exploring this gem in Hangzhou. There are plenty of restaurants and quirky shops in Hangzhou, especially down this pedestrian street. We were staying nearby, which is why we keep eating in this area, but it really is one of the most popular areas for tourists to go to. So whilst we lived in China, we were actually living in a place called Tianjin in Northern China. And in the city where we lived, it was quite hard to find street food. We lived in the city center and it just wasn't that popular apart from during certain festivals during the year. So to be able to find street food at these little hubs of vendors was pretty exciting for us. So along this street, there is a little um, like hideaway where there's lots of different local food vendors. And it seems like quite a local area to be honest. I think most of the people are from around this area. And we just picked up some of these. So these are Kong Bao Pao. I believe that's how you pronounce it. I'm not entirely sure. My um, TA Jessie, I always asked her what her like, best food is in the area. And she quickly texted me just now saying, You have to try these snacks. She forgot about them. And she was like, Oh, quickly try these snacks before you uh, leave Hangzhou. So we decided, Oh, we have to get them. I believe they're like a pancake with shallots in them with like a sweet sauce on the outside and it's really interesting how they cook them because he was like like with like, a, like almost like a flat iron type thing like pushing them down it's really interesting of food this time we have picked up some dong po pork and then the other dish we've got is just some noodles okay so we spent the afternoon strolling around and now we are heading to dinner yes we ate a lot on this trip the first thing we ordered was crayfish, a popular option in Hangzhou. This is me attempting to show off my expert skills of peeling these. My friend Jessie had taught me how to do it and it is a long process, but they are tasty. By the way, that was sarcasm. I am by no means an expert. Of course, we have some more pork belly because we were obsessed. And then we tried this deep fried squirrel fish. This was super tasty and had like a sweet and sour taste to it. We then managed to do it again. 
we found a random fake European city in China. So if you've watched our Shanghai video, you would have seen our time at Thames Town, a British themed town on the outskirts of Shanghai. But here in Hangzhou, we have Tian de Cheng. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that is my best go at it. I'll leave the name of it in the description below. So it is also known as Sky City. This is a French themed district on the outskirts of Hangzhou. Like I mentioned in my Shanghai video, the government had created these European styled suburb cities to try and relieve some of the pressure on the bigger cities. It turns out they weren't that popular, but that is why you will find these European styled cities around places like Shanghai and Hangzhou. There are loads of these. I will leave like a blog post in the description. We had found before we went, because there's loads, but we decided to go to this particular one. So this was pretty deserted, apart from couples having photographs here and the occasional local cycling pass. But we loved spending the day just strolling through this practically abandoned city and seeing their very own version of the Eiffel Tower. This was about a 45 minute drive from Hangzhou city center itself, but we just grabbed a Diddy and got here super quickly, super easily. And then we were able to get one very quickly back to Hangzhou as well. So thank you so much for watching this video and for all of your support on these China travel vlogs. We just hit a thousand subscribers, guys. I am so happy. So thank you so, so much for all of your support and love. If you like this video, please make sure you give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe and hit that notification bell as well so that you can catch our next video where we are heading to Guilin. Thank you so much, guys. Take care and I shall see you very soon. Bye.